What is going on guys? Welcome to another video on my channel here. Liciously, as you guys can tell from this video, my hair has been growing pretty rapidly and I'm very uh, excited to see how much hair has grown. Now, obviously this side here, there's a little bit less density because there's where the area where there's not a lot of hair that's been growing in. And also because my hairstylist kind of messed up my hair uh, when she ended up cutting it last time. So that's why this side is kind of a little bit more see-through, but I like how it's turning out. And I plan on growing it out for a few more months so that I can end up kind of, I guess, cover the forehead and just kind of see how uh, different ways that I can style my hair. But today in this video, I wanted to give you guys an update on Dr. Suji's research. I know that it's been forever and ever since we've actually heard back on his research. And there's people that's just starting to doubt his research because it's been almost a decade since his first uh, initial research. And the only... Uh, animals that are actually getting hair are mice and not humans and ultimately our goal is for us to end male pattern baldness and to regrow hair and so for those who are new to my channel I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of what Dr. Suji's research is about I don't want to bore you guys to death for those who've been following my channel because obviously you guys already know what Dr. Suji's research is based on so pretty much Dr. Suji's research is based on two different types of cells we have the epithelial cells and then the mesenchymal cells where Dr. Suji found out that when the two cells interact they are going to cause hair follicle induction so Dr. Suji's method involves getting a small sample from the back of the scalp the HD resistant area that's where a lot of people don't bald and so if you were to extract hair from the back of the scalp the hairs are not going to be prone to male pattern baldness and that's why if you do implant or replicate them they are actually not going to fall out for the most part. So a small portion of the back of the scalp is going to be dissected either through an FUT or an FUE and the hair cells are going to be obtained. So then the epithelial and then the mesenchymal cells are going to be cultured in a petri dish. And once they've done that, they are going to be placed in an optimum environment where it would be created so that the cells can mimic the fetal skin environment. The culture cells would be injected into the environment and then they would be ready to be delivered in the scalp and should grow into new fully developed hair follicles in balding men. So in an update that was actually published a few days ago, the research team bioengineered hair follicle germs with bulge cells that contain epithelial cells and follicle derma papilla cells harboring mesenchymal cells isolated from the follicles of adult mice. Now this is different because before we actually got it from embryonic cells and the research has actually been focused on adult cells which should be more realistic because if it does transition from animals to humans, uh, obviously they would want to use the stem cells that we have right now. After transplanting them into the hairless mice skin, the bioengineered hair follicle germs developed into mature hair follicles and generated hair at the desired density. Now this is very important because we need density and if you don't have density, the hair transplant is not going to look natural. Hair follicles also demonstrated functional regeneration and even had the ability to control the hair color by adding pigment stem cells. When the hair actually has functional regeneration, once it falls out, it should regenerate new hair follicles. Otherwise, if it doesn't, then that means you're balding. And there are also two major challenges when it came to applying hair follicle regeneration technology in humans. Uh, one of them was the need to develop an in vitro application method for epithelial cells and dermal papilla cells. Previously, epithelial cells had not been identified and it was known that the hair follicle regenerative capacity of cells disappeared when cultured in vitro. Now, we have overcome this problem. Dr. Suji's team and his research have actually gotten the mouse and the human stem cells and they have actually been able to overcome this issue. So it's no longer a problem. And that's why obviously when we culture the two cells in vitro, it shouldn't have any issues as far as the cells disappearing. Development of a robust method for the mass production of regenerated hair follicles. We obviously want to obtain a small sample and then you know generate as much uh, hair follicles as we can, an infinite number of donor supplies so that we can go ahead and go from a Nord 7 to a Nord 1. That is our goal. So before we had regenerated hair follicles were produced manually by compartmentalizing two different types of stem cells in a collagen gel at a high density in a cell suspension of 10,000th of a milliliter. So it was actually very difficult to mass produce and stably produce regenerated hair follicles. Uh, we actually had to come up with a new different type of technology to overcome this just for the clinical application aspect. Now, they actually succeeded in developing this technology with collaborative research with Coursera Corporation, which obviously began in 2016. So the latest development to Dr. Suzy's research in 2018 is the fact that they were able to create equipment that allowed for a more efficient mass production of such hairs 
follicle cells, uh, while ensuring the integrity of the different types of stem cells taken from human scalp cells and used in the cultivating process, while ensuring the integrity of different types of stem cells taken from human scalp cells and used in the cultivation process is maintained. Now this technology that they also found is actually able to regenerate hair itself after being transplanted, meaning that the hair growth cycle can be sustained so it falls out, it's going to keep on regrowing and just like any other normal hair follicle cycle. Hair follicles that could produce 10,000 strands of hair were created after 20 days uh, or so from one square centimeter of scalp. So I believe the average person has about 100,000 to 150,000 hair follicles. If they are actually able to produce 10,000 strands of hair in one square centimeter of scalp, um, all it's gonna take is 10 centimeters or 10 square centimeters of scalp to produce 100,000 uh, hair follicles, which should be a, a full set of hair with pretty much maximum density. So this is, uh, this is very, very, uh, this is crazy. Uh, this is very good news for a lot of people who are receding and for people who are actually going to be suffering from hair loss in the future. Now from July, the research team also plans on transplanting the hair follicles to the backs of mice in order to confirm the safety of the technology. Researchers are keen to determine if any allergic reaction occurs or if tumors develop. If no problems emerge, clinical trials could go underway in 2019 on humans. So the rest of 2018 is going to be pretty much clinical applications on mice, trying to see if it's pretty much safe, if it's going to be growing any tumors or cancers. Uh, the important thing about this research is that sometimes cell replication, stem cell replication can cause cancer and through research and clinical trials, um, you know, they, they are very, they're, they're very important because Stem cells can be cancerous when they are replicated too many times. And because these stem cells are actually grown in vitro or outside of the body, they also run the risk of turning into cancer when a certain enzyme causes the cells to continue to grow and replicate long after they would normally stop growing. And that's what cancer is. It's abnormal cell growth that continues to keep on growing and growing and growing. So if the research concludes that they are actually able to not do this and pretty much not cause any tumors or abnormal cell growth, this would carry on over to 2019 and humans would be pretty much tested to see if this is going to be effective, also to test for the efficacy. So once again, until we hear back for further news, uh, hopefully the end of this year, we really, there's nothing for us to do other than to be patient and wait uh, and just pray and hope that everything is going to go as planned. And as you guys know, Dr. Suji and his team's research is one of the more promising research that's been ongoing in the hair loss community for treating male pattern baldness for both male and females. And so I'm very excited to see this progress. I'm very excited to see, um, you know, just, uh, just looking forward actually to, to this research because this will benefit a lot of people. Now, as far as costs, I don't know how much it's going to be, but obviously it's going to cost a lot more than hair transplant. But I don't think we should be worrying about that right now. We should just worry about the efficacy and just hope that there's going to be no cancerous growth or any abnormal growth in the animals that's being tested and that it's going to carry on over to humans. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, guys. If you guys have any questions, if you guys have anything else to support or add to this video, please let me know. Make sure to subscribe, like this video. And as always, I will keep you guys updated on the most latest hair transplant and hair loss research. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.